Thanks for joining us today. We're always so encouraged to know that God is using these messages to serve people all across the world. If you have a story to share, we'd love for you to post it in social media using the hashtag tc.cc or send an email to story at the chapel.cc. Also, if you'd like to help support this resource and others like it, you can give online through our website, thechapel.cc, and help us to bring this your way every single week. Enjoy. Amen. Great to see you guys. All right, now listen, last week, this is what we did. While we're sitting down, can we do this? Can we welcome everyone watching online and the Hernando Correctional Facility? Can we give them a hand, lies? Come on, let them hear it. Come on. We're so glad that we are your church. Listen, last week we started a new series, and I get so stoked and so pumped up about, uh, about when we start something new because I, I start to really feel as though God is starting to do something with what we, what we find together in his word. We started talking about being overloaded. You were never meant to carry certain things. God wants us to go to different heights in our life. But it's really, really, like last week, this was really difficult. I worked out like a fiend this week so I could be ready. Plus, I'm on a diet. No, just kidding. We're carrying things that we're not meant to. Backwards, check it out. Nice. God. Hold on. We're not meant to carry certain things in our life. But yet we do. And God is wanting to, all summer long we've been talking about lifting. God wants to lift our lives to another level. Oh, yeah, that was a little weird. Okay. But it's hard because we carry things with us that on this journey, on this life, that we were never meant to carry. What we discovered last week is everything set by the manufacturer has a load limit. Thank God for this little step stool that can handle the short, squatty Italian load, right? Everything has a capacity. And what we found last week is it's not so bad. But then when you start talking about things we pick up along the journey. Hurt and pain. And, and all of a sudden it throws us over the limit. It throws us over the limit. It overloads us. Meanwhile, scripture is clear what we discovered last week. I've come to give you life so that you'd walk around with with baggage. Jesus died for me. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? (laughs) It's because you're carrying stuff. We're carrying stuff. I'm carrying stuff that we were never meant to carry. And we're overloaded. And what we said last week, some very interesting things we found. A lot of times what happens is we become overloaded because we have expectations of the way things uh, would go in our life. Relationships, jobs, professions, promotions, marriages. It causes us, unfulfilled expectations cause us. What causes us to pick up baggage? Well, unfulfilled expectations. What we said is untreated pain through a family member, through something that happened to us. Untreated pain. We never really dealt with the effects. And what happens is when we deal with untreated, untreated pain and like, ah, I'm not going to, it's not that big of a deal. I'm a man. I'm this all right. We wind up picking up baggage that causes us to be overloaded because we never dealt with the pain and the hurt from a situation. What also overloads us, how do we get this baggage? Um, from an unresolved yesterday. I had the, be- the wonderful chance to practice this this week. Just so we're clear, I, I was dealing with a pastor who uh, I have somewhat, or I thought I had a really good relationship with, and he said something about me. And I heard about it. And I love that kind of stuff, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, no, he did not say that. Surely not. So I made the phone call because it bothered me. I said, hey, man, hey, what's up? Mm. Hey, hey, man, I'm doing good, good. I had a question. I was, on, I was in Philadelphia this week, 
and, and coaching with some church planters. And I was in the hotel room. This is the best time so that if I lose my temper and lose my cool, nobody will see me. So um, I go, hey, man, did, did, I just heard, I just want to ask because that's what you're supposed to do. Not because I heard it that it's true. Is it true? Long pause, which is never, by the way, a good thing after you say that. But I have learned that an unresolved yesterday, something that bothers us, that if we don't deal with it, I begin to pick up a little bit of baggage next time somebody talks to me about that person. Yeah, well, let me tell you. That's really hurt and wounds and pain talking. Yeah, well, let me tell you. Because I never went, did you? Like, why would you, why would you, what would cause you to say that? Like, what? So an unresolved yesterday and how you know something is bothering you and what we said yesterday, which I got a, a, a lot of really positive emails, which is awesome. I said, if you, know, if you don't know whether you have an unresolved issue with somebody or not, ask yourself how often and how easy is it for you to pray for them? How easy is it for you to pray for them? That you want the best for them, that you want God's best for them. That's how you know whether you've picked up baggage from an unresolved yesterday, whether it was a comment or whether it was somebody, somebody did something or said something about you. And I've learned that my personality doesn't do well with that. I go mafia real quick if I don't absolutely just go, hey, man, I got to tell you, you can't do this. It bothered me. And if we're not careful, we wind up picking up baggage that overloads us because we're not meant to carry that. We said the other thing that helps us create this baggage that, that we create, where does this come from, was an unhealthy view of ourselves, of how we believe God sees us. Because of uh, something we've said, something we've done, we know it was sinful. We carry around a level of shame or guilt. And we always think we might be defined by, by something. An act, two, three, four months ago, two years ago. And so we get used to carrying this, this thing around because we just have this unhealthy sense of how we believe God sees us. It creates baggage in our life. It creates so much baggage that it makes us over capacity because we're not meant to care. Uh, unrepented sin. This was a good one because we said it wasn't unforgiven or unconfessed sin. We said it was unrepentant. Some of us have made decisions in church before that we would never do blank again. We would never say blank again. But we never made a behavioral change when we left God's house. Unrepent. The word repent means you have to physically turn from what did and what you did wrong or what we said wrong or what we did wrong. It doesn't mean you're not forgiven. So we pick up this baggage. God didn't forgive me. I still feel God's getting me back. That's why I didn't get that job. God's doing, he, so I knew he'd get even with me. No, it's because you didn't, we didn't make a physical change. It's not unconfessed sin that causes us or unforgiven sin. Sin, simply a, a behavior that we did that God didn't create us to do. Sin, simply a, something we said that we weren't created to say. And we start carrying this baggage because we think God doesn't want anything to do with this, but we didn't make a style change. We didn't, we didn't do a lifestyle change. Unrepentant sin causes us to pick up these bags. So here's God trying to lift our lives up. And he's like, why is it so difficult? Why is this so difficult, God? Because I got bags hanging all over me. Because you know we're meant to carry it. And what we said was, this is what we were going to do for the next three or four weeks. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine they have divine power to demolish strongholds. What we were going to do for the next four or five weeks, we were going to look at some baggage in our lives that overload us. Strongholds. You spend a little time looking at what really a stronghold is. It's a word called a kurama, and it means a prisoner locked by deception. Some of us are living our lives as though God doesn't want anything to do with us. That's not true. Because you have a stronghold in your life. Because it's baggage. You cannot fix spiritual problems 
with an earthly mechanism. You can't fix a spiritual problem. You, you feel shameful and you feel guilty. I feel guilty. I feel shameful of the things I've said and done as a husband, as a father. You can't fix that with earthly weapons. It's what the scripture says. No, we to fight, we have to have spiritual things. And we said this word stronghold, it means that we're living life by a lie. God doesn't want anything to do with me. God doesn't really, he's not interested. God's not listening to my prayer. God's not, and I can tell, look at my life. Look at all the things that have gone wrong. What? That's a lie. But the stronghold mentality, what it says as we pick up baggage is you're living life as though the lie was true. You're living life as though the lie was true. It's a prisoner. You're a prisoner. You're locked. You can't go anywhere. You can't go left. You can't go right. And you sure as heck can't go up. A prisoner locked by deception. Your, your attitude, your mentality, what we say, what we do is directed by believing a lie that is true. We believe it's actually true that I'm defined by my mistake six months ago. That I'm defined by the relationships and the mistakes that I've made. There's this lie that we're living. It's a stronghold. And what causes us to pick up baggage is we actually are living a life Believing a lie, according to scripture. Tonight, for just a little bit, if the issue that we pick up baggage because of lies, God hasn't forgiven me, God's not hearing my prayer. If the issue is living life by deception, if the issue is living life by a lie, then the answer must be, let me tell you the truth. And so for the next three, four weeks, when we talk about specific baggage, huh, we're going to go, what is the lie that some of us hear in our heads about who we are as men and women, as fathers, as husbands, as wives, as moms, as students, aunts, uncles, grandparents, siblings? What are some of those lies? Because if we start to believe the lie, we have a stronghold and we live life as though it was true and it's really not, then let's... Let's start uncovering some truths about who we are, about being sons and daughters of God, about what God's word, which is his voice to us today, says about who we are. And I can guarantee you, not because it's me speaking or this staff or anything other than the power of God's word, his voice for us today. I believe we'll start dropping some baggage. I believe we'll stop dropping some baggage. We'll start. In prayer this week, um, it, was just, it was a really great week. Um, had the opportunity um, to say goodbye to all my kids now who are away at school. So I know that sounds weird, right? Yeah, get out. No. Uh, and then any time that the chapel can talk about how many mistakes we make as a church to make other churches better, that's always a privilege. Always. But in prayer, there is this, this little thing I had in my head, and I want us to just sit back for a moment. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. We're going to talk about um, guilt and shame through, from relationships for next week. One week we're going to talk about sins and tendencies that we have that keep reoccurring because that's some baggage we'll pick up. And another week um, we're going to talk about just this word bitterness and what it means and why it's baggage, why we're bitter sometimes and how to get rid of all of it. But there's something we've got to get straight. And, and sometimes I feel like I haven't been a very good pastor when it comes to this. Sometimes I feel like sometimes I, I miss it when it comes to what we're about to talk about. 
A lot of times I uh, operate under like the presumption that you have a relationship with God. I, I, I constantly have in my mind, not that you know the stories and not that you know things, I get so amped up and crazy about teaching God's word because it's so beautiful to me. It's so rich in depth and in meaning. We believe that it talks about everything in life. It's not, it's not that. It's just I just start believing and I start thinking, well, you, you have like a rela- relationship. It's like me inviting you to a football game and it's going to be tackle and just assuming and presuming that you have the football gear. Like you have a helmet, you have shoulder pads, you have the jersey. I just, I just in my mind, I just, right... So let's read this together. Let me show you what God showed me. Let me try to communicate it to you so that the word can add life to you. But then, but I'm presuming s- stuff. And man, it struck me as I sat. I was with uh, a friend, Pastor Steve from, from Trustville, Alabama. Who, uh, pastor's a great church, and we were together this week. And, and we, I sat in the hotel room, and I began to share with him. And I, I wrote out three things uh, that I don't want to presume anymore. And, and we can talk about all the subjects that we're going to talk about. But if we don't get these three things, you're not really going to get rid of bitterness. You can't. You, 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 you can't drop. You're not really going to drop the baggage of insecurity. You drop it for a little bit. So I want you to hear my heart every single time. I speak, but especially tonight. There's something about unloading baggage that I've experienced in my life that I always go back to the same three things. It, it, I, just, it just, I just keep, it's like I keep going back and back to the same three. One, one of them maybe more than others, but, but these three. Here's the principle. How do we get rid of baggage that we pick up? Because we all pick up stuff. We all pick up baggage that overloads us. How do we get rid of it? The Bible says we demolish, we destroy arguments and every pretension, every thought that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. That you're not loved, that he doesn't care, that he can't forgive. Whatever that is, that he's getting even with me. That he doesn't care, that he doesn't hear my prayer. <laughs> it sets itself, whatever knowledge, it sets itself up against God. This thought is contrary to what God says. That's what this scripture is saying to you. That's what the apostle Paul is saying. Well, this is how we get rid of baggage. This is how we do this. We, we have these thoughts and we've got to figure out these out. We have to identify them that set themselves, these thoughts, these ideas that set themselves up against what God says. And we take captive. It means you've got to grab it. You just don't let it go or passing by. You've got to grab it. You take captive so it's got nowhere else to go but in the palm of your hand. You take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We hear that word obedience and it kind of wells up. For me, it wells up images of nuns with a wooden stick or ruler slapping the junk out of my fingers growing up. I hear obedience. I'm like, ah. The word obedience there means actually to line up. And we take captive every thought to make it line up to what Christ says. Just don't let these thoughts go by unattended. Grab it, squeeze it, and make it line up with what Christ says about who you are. About the man or woman you're supposed to be about the marriage you can have, should have, about the hope that the gospel of Christ brings. Bring those things into alignment. That's how it begins getting rid of baggage. You got to hold that thought that's contrary to what God says. Here's three. Without these three, I'm going to make a broad sweeping statement. Without these three, it will prevent you from God taking you to a position where he's always desired you to be. 
without these three coming against, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, for me, it's almost daily. But without taking these thoughts captive and lining them up with what God says, we'll talk about hurt from family. We'll talk about bitterness. We'll talk about shame. We'll talk about guilt, getting rid of the baggage, getting rid of everything. Without these three, it ain't going to stick. Number one, God has always loved me. Oh, Pastor Q, I know, I know God loves me. I just, I just know he loves me. I've heard, oh, come on. Three truths, because if the problem is living by a lie, let's talk about truth that we can't avoid, that we constantly have to take captive. God has always loved you. He's always loved you. He always will. Let it sink for a minute. Come on, Pastor Q. Here's a test. When your expectations are for something to go a certain way and they don't, do you settle for the thought that God doesn't care or God's getting even with you? Do you settle for the thought that God's not concerned? Do you settle for the thought that God's getting back at you? Because that's not his love. When you know you've done something, some sort of behavior or appeased or satisfied some craving or appetite, that's not the way God intended you for to live. Do you think your, your relationship with him is destitute or completely now there's such a gigantic, there's no way he could love me after the things I've said or I've done? Then you don't know it to the level that it directs your actions and your mentality. And into the Hebrew mind and in the Bible's economy, as a man thinks, so he is. And if we don't learn that in the depth of who we are, that God has and will always love me. You can't drop a piece of baggage and you might live, be living overloaded. I took this version of the Bible, New Living Translation, because it, 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 it just puts new eyes on a verse that we're about to see in every end zone in the NFL, John 3.16. <laughs> this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why. So that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger. I'd like to read that again. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help. If you were to tell me that in order for you and I to have a deeper relationship, if you were to tell me in order for you and I to be closer, if you were to tell me in order for you and I to go to the next level, I had to give up my son, Michael, or my daughter, Michaela. Sorry, bro, we're not going to be friends. Sorry, we're, we're actually not going to have a relationship. Because I'm not willing to do that. And to know that God Almighty went, yeah, in order for you and I to be in relationship, in order for you and I to be close, yep, I'll give up my son. Without knowing that and convincing yourself and knowing it as truth and claiming that, for me, just so we're clear, I got to do it every day. That he's always loved me. He's just always loved me. In the thick, in the thin, in the smart and in the stupid, in the joyful and in the sinful. He's always loved you. Always. God can free me, truth number two. Well, you don't understand my appetites and my cravings, Pastor Q. I don't have to. He does. You don't understand how hard it is, how difficult it is. You'd be surprised <laughs> if you knew my story, how hard and how difficult I know it, it can be. God has always loved you, truth number one. Truth number two, 
you got to get inside so we can start kicking some tail on some baggage and dropping it. you got to know God can free me. He can free me from anything that I believe, whether it's a pessimistic attitude, whether it's a negative, na- negative Nancy attitude, or whether it's an addiction. Whether it's sexual addiction, whether it's pornography, whether it's food, something that directs your mentality and your behavior more than the spirit of the living God, Jesus can free you. You no longer have to live under a continuous, low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a fatted lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. There's a new spirit at work. There's a new spirit at work. And what we do every single day as believers and followers of Christ, here we go. You either feed my flesh that's not godly or my spirit, the new spirit at work. The more you feed the new spirit, the more you drop baggage. The less you feed the spirit, the more baggage you'll pick up. It was such a great conversation with this pastor, this other pastor. Because what I said was, did you say this? I heard from someone that you said this. And he goes, yeah, I did. And he said it with a little attitude. That's why I'm glad we weren't together. Because he could have been Brooklyn Jap napped right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he said it like with a little attitude. Yeah, like, yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Huh. And I went, man, dude. What got inside you? You're nasty. Because, listen, he doesn't define who I am. God does. His words don't direct me. God's spirit does. What he says doesn't cause me to react. Am I that way all the time? No. But this week I was. And so when you know there's a new spirit at work, dude, I don't allow anybody to have that much influence in my life that causes me to be something that God didn't create me to be. I just don't do that. I got enough trouble getting enough of God's spirit in me so that he'll he'll direct me. Because the the truth is, he can free me. And the word is clear. There's a new spirit at work in you. There's a new spirit. Feed that one. That one gets stronger. Feed your flesh, which means just our natural human tendencies. It's going to be hard to drop baggage, and it's going to be real easy to pick it up. God has always loved you and I. God can free me. And God will restore me. Three truths. When you drop kids off at school, at college, if you haven't, um, aside from the sticker shock of tuition payments, um, you, you, you sit and you tell friends that might be they're rooming with or whatever, and you start telling stories. And, you know, some people don't know I'm a pastor. It's not the first thing. I don't, I don't do that. I'm not that kind of guy. Like, hi, how are you, Pastor Mark? I'm just like, I'm Michael and Michaela's dad. You know what I mean? I'm like... We happened to be with some friends and, uh, that uh, knew me when. And they went, so how's that church? It's like, I think it's going good. I'm just trying not to say stuff to jack it up. You know what I mean? I think it's going all right. I think it's cool. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It could all blow up tomorrow. Who knows? And I said, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and they go, man. And they started telling uh, these stories. And it was funny. And we laughed like crazy. Stories that you'll never hear. (laughs) I'm the poster child for God's grace and redemption. 
And every day I have to remind myself, he's always loved me. He can free me from things that are trying to attach itself to me all the time. And I know he can restore my life from what it could have been and what it was to who he created me to be. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter. Can you just raise your hand if that's been you in any shape or form? Although you, you've made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will again <laughs> bring me up. Without those three, I'm going to have Pastor Jason um, come and just, just I, I just want us to pray for a little bit. Without those three, God always, he's always loved me. Uh, without, listen, without the three pillars, what I call them, the three, the three things. Man, we, we talk about all this stuff but it's not gonna stick. It's very, very simple. God has always loved you. God, listen, God can free you and God can restore you. Simple, plenty of time. Are you a Christian? That's it. I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about knowledge. Oh, no, God. I know. No. That in the midst of the trouble and the bitterness that has come your way, do you know that he loves you? <laughs> do you know that he can free you? Do you know that he can restore you? Have you, have you said not from tradition, not because I grew up in church, not because I've gone for, Christi for Christmas and Easter, not because I started coming to the chapel. We're not talking about church attendance. We're talking about relationship. That when I hit a brick wall in whatever it is in my life, that I hit a brick wall and I'm like, ah, I know this is difficult, God. I know you love me. Show me what I need to learn. Lord, I screwed up because of my appetites and my behavior. God, I need you to restore. I need you to restore me to who you created me to be. God, I've got these things that I crave and I have an appetite for more than crave and have an appetite for who you created me to be. That's what we're talking about, Christian. And it, it makes no sense to invite you to a tackle football game without the gear, without the helmet or the cleats or the pads. You won't have fun on the field. It won't be a good journey. And your hurt is going to be harder and harder to restore and free you from. And it's going to be harder and harder to drop baggage if you're not a biblical Christian. Can't define it by America anymore. That he is Lord. That he is my God. And regardless of my mistakes, my behaviors, and my appetites, I know that he loves me. I know he can free me. And I know he can restore. I'm not going to presume. I've asked some of our wonderful prayer team, some of our pastoral staff, Pastor Jason, is just going to play for a little bit. You need someone to pray with because you need one of those three. 
you need to know the depth that he's always loved you. Or you need to know, I'm going to know today more than ever, Pastor Q, that he can free me from this. Or I just, I knew he loved me and I knew that he can free me, but I didn't know he could restore it. Yeah, I'm your pastor. That's all I got to say. So if you need to make a prayer and say a prayer of just that, I need, I need Jesus to be the one that I'm convinced loves me. I'm convinced I know it now. And I'm asking for forgiveness of what I've said and what I've done because he can free me from the things I've said and I've done and he can restore what has happened in my life. I want to be a biblical Christian. Not talking about a church attender or part of a denomination. I'm not talking about church membership. You need to pray with some of our staff. Guys, prayer team, if you'll come up. Some of our staff, I see Pastor Stephen and Miss Kathy. I see Daryl and Pam, Pastor Dave and Miss Larissa. Some of our elders are here. Patty and Clay. Yeah. This is so simple. Three things. Three. I know that he loves me. I know he can free me and I know he can restore me. Lord, I want to make you Lord of my life. That's what I need. I need it back. Oh, yeah, you, you did it at camp once. You did it five years ago. You stayed away from whatever it was. Now is the time we're going to drop some baggage because that is God's will for your life. Hey, thanks again for watching this week's message. If you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can do so by giving on the chapel website, thechapel.cc, and use the give button that's located in the upper right-hand corner. Hey, we love being your church, and we'll see you next week.